Well, hey there, and welcome to the Intentional Academy podcast, where we believe that life is best when it is lived on purpose. If you want help finding time for what matters most, launching your dream career, and building a prosperous future, then you should visit us at intentionalacademy.com. I'm your host, Tony Farrar, and I am thrilled that you are tuning in. I am so excited for today's episode. If you haven't caught on yet, we talk about three key areas of life and how to live them on purpose, time, career, and money. We've been taking these first few episodes of the podcast to cycle through each topic and give you an introduction into what we're thinking. I had a plan for today's episode to talk about our five big ideas related to building a career you love, but I think there's something more important and more timely to talk about today. We're about to dig into a topic that's causing a lot of anxiety right now, the job hunt. Whether you're on the market right now or not, stay with me because big things are happening in the world and there's an opportunity for all of us. At the time of this recording, we are quarantined in response to the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. The majority of people are working remotely. Money is tight. Paychecks are being skipped. Jobs are being lost. To make matters worse, many organizations, including my own, have implemented a hiring freeze, leaving everyone who's on the hunt feeling more desperate and locked out than ever. What do we do in response? The world of online job applications is already tough to navigate. Finding work that ignites your passion might sound nice, but for most of us, we'd be happy to just find work. Let me take a moment for the class of 2020 or anyone else who had plans to start their first major job hunt this year. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. This isn't what it was supposed to be like. This isn't the light at the end of the tunnel after all of the years of hard work and sacrifice that you put into educating yourself. This isn't where the all-nighters, term papers, high-stakes exams, and low-paid internships were supposed to land you. You weren't supposed to miss out on these last few precious weeks of school. Not for the learning, but for the time spent enjoying student life for the last time. You're supposed to be out with your friends right now. Or finishing your capstone project. You're supposed to be gearing up for graduation, picking your outfit, decorating your mortarboard, battling the school's event planner for two more tickets to the ceremony because you've got a large family. I'm so sorry. You know, this reminds me of a story I heard in an episode of The West Wing recently. That's our binge watch of choice during the quarantine. A person's walking along and falls in a hole. Standing there at the bottom of the hole, looking up and desperately hoping for someone to come along and help him out, the face of a doctor appears over the rim. Can you help me? The doctor tosses down a prescription and continues walking. A few minutes later, a priest comes along. Seeing the person trapped in the hole, the priest says a prayer for the person in the hole before continuing on his way. Finally, a friend comes along who takes one look at the situation and immediately jumps in the hole. What are you doing? Now we're both trapped. The friend says, no, I've been in this hole before, and I know the way out. Let me show you. Today, let me be that friend. I had the last few weeks of a semester stolen from me as an undergrad, too. I faced what seemed like a hopeless job search, too. You can hear all about it in episode one at intentionalacademy.com slash one. Stakes were high and it felt like the odds were all stacked against me. I found my way out of the hole, and you will too. So that's what we're going to talk about today. How you respond determines whether or not you transform this unusual challenge into an unusual opportunity. We're going to talk about the issues with online job applications, problems that are always present, but this current situation compounds. Then we'll give you three practical actions that you can take right now to skip the rat race of applying to job after job and instead connect with engaged professionals with hiring authority. Hiring freeze or not, lockdown or not, they're going to know your name. and They're going to think of you when the time is right. Before we get to that, I'd like you to know that this episode is sponsored by our free guide, the Ultimate Career Builder Starter Kit. Most job seekers struggle to get employers' attention through online job applications, so we created a system that helps you build your image, connect with potential employers, and land a job you love. Listen, we understand how hopeless it feels to hear no response after desperately filling out online application after online application. You spend hours polishing your resume, 
fighting with formatting and searching for great keywords to make it pop, after all of your effort in getting things just right, they make you copy it line by line into text boxes in their online application system. It's almost as if they're trying to tell you even before you start, you're just a number, a set of keywords. We want you to make it as easy as possible for our computer system to scan your materials and filter you out. The problem is, we're facing an incredibly competitive job market in an uncertain economy that's on lockdown due to a pandemic. I see many talented candidates whose job applications are being ignored, leaving them feeling so desperate they'll settle for any job that makes an offer. People deserve to love their jobs, which is why we created the free Ultimate Career Builder Starter Kit to help you make three key decisions. Three choices that will launch you down a different path to searching for work, following a proven process, and putting the humanity back in your job hunt. If you'd like to skip the faceless online application system and start reaching out to professionals confident that you belong, you need to download this guide. Head over to the show notes for today's episode at intentionalacademy.com slash three to grab your free copy today. Intentionalacademy.com slash three as in the number three, the number of this episode. That's where you should go to download the ultimate Career Builder Starter Kit and stop the hopeless cycle of applying to job after job with no response. Visit intentionalacademy.com slash three to learn how you can use your unique personality to find jobs that you'll love. intentionalacademy.com slash three. The story of the person trapped in the hole reminded me of the time back in high school my friend David and I organized an all-night hole digging contest. Now, you might be wondering what an all-night hole digging contest is. It's a contest where people dig holes all night. We used to do these types of things fairly often. Getting into good-natured trouble, that's what high school is all about. We'd sneak out of my parents' house in the middle of the night and go roam the suburbs looking for an adventure. For this particular exploit, we recruited about a dozen people. We tracked down a dozen shovels. We found an old lot that had a huge pile of dirt in it, a pile that hadn't moved in years. It was the perfect site for this dig. No one would be looking. No one would be hurt. We stashed the shovels, and we went back to my place to explain to my parents that we'd be having a 12-person sleepover. Here's the thing. My parents are some of the smartest people I know. What the heck is a 17-year-old doing with a 12-person slumber party? 12 dudes in my little bedroom? <laughs> yeah, right. We thought we were so sneaky as we used the rope ladder to climb one by one out of my second story bedroom window. Meanwhile, my parents were just down the hall listening to the entire thing. They knew. They thought it was hilarious. Or so they told me after this was over. We made our way to the hill carrying a boom box with a specially made playlist burned on a CD. If you don't know what that means, we used to carry around stereos that ran on six D-sized batteries just so we could listen to a 45-minute playlist. I think we had Blind Melon on this one. When we got to the hill, we discovered that the chill in the air was a bit more than a chill. It was stinking cold. There we were at midnight with a dozen people trying to dig holes, only to realize that the ground was frozen a few inches thick. Not to worry. That's why we brought the pickaxe. So there we were, taking turns breaking through icy mud, when the spotlight appeared. A police officer had pulled over alongside the road in the distance, spotted us, and hit us with his floodlight. We froze, panicked that we were about to get in some serious trouble. Instead, he just yelled, Go home! For some reason, we decided we should probably run anyhow, so we did. We took off across the field behind the hill, headed for the woods, and hid in a thicket. I'm pretty sure that guy never even got out of his car. He was probably on his way home at the end of his shift. We sat there for a while to make sure we were good, then made our way back to the site of the big dig. We broke into two teams, and the competition was simple. Whoever had the deepest hole at the end of the night wins. This lasted about an hour. One team had a hole that was a couple feet deep. The other was already up to their elbows. We decided to shift gears a bit, and all took turns working on the single deep hole, just trying to see how far we could get. I'm six feet tall, and I can reach the ceiling of my apartment without standing on my toes. When we stopped digging, I could stand at the bottom of this hole, put my hands over my head, and not reach the top. So there you have it, my friend. 
When I said I'd been down in a hole before and I knew my way out, I really meant it. Moving on. Things might seem bleak right now. You might have had a big goal and just discovered that the ground is frozen. <laughs> See what I did there? But there's one message I want you to take away from today's episode. The professional world is at home, glued to their screens. You've never had a better opportunity to get their attention. Let me say that again. They're at home, glued to their screens. Who is? Basically, all of them. What are they doing? They're trying to work remotely using the internet. You have a great chance to get in front of some influential professionals and lay the foundation of a professional network, a network you can leverage to find and land your dream job. Let's figure out what we can do with that opportunity. The problem with online applications is they create a buyer's market. A buyer's market is a situation where the supply is greater than the demand, so prices go down amid the multitude of options. The buyer gets to be pickier. When gas prices drop, it's because there's more gas than people want, so the price drops until folks are willing to buy it. The same thing happens to the price of homes or the price of the latest smartphone. Though they mask phone price response to supply and demand with discounts instead of changing the actual price. Could you imagine if gasoline cost $5 a gallon, but every day the discount changed? Act now, gasoline, 50% off. That's what they do with the phones. I read a study that showed that the typical name brand organization gets about 10,000 applications for their entry level positions. I'm not talking about local small businesses, but the kind of places who have Super Bowl commercials. 10,000 applications for one position. Are you the best fit? How on earth could anyone know? Why do they get so many applications? Two reasons. First, we tend to equate brand recognition with prestige. It's impressive to tell your relatives that you work for a company they've heard of over Thanksgiving dinner. So we consider these places our dream jobs when we're new to a field and we don't really know who all the players are. Second, they get 10,000 applications because it's easy for anyone, anywhere, to apply. People apply to these jobs when they aren't even looking, just to see what happens. So how does the company respond? How do you sort through 10,000 applications? with artificial intelligence. The problem is, artificial intelligence isn't all that intelligent. Employers try to teach it what they're looking for by feeding it a GPA threshold and a few keywords. As applicants figure out which keywords work, the organization just ratchets up the GPA threshold because it's the only other control variable that they have at their disposal. This feeds back into students and causes stress, pressure to get higher and higher grades. People end up in a keyword and GPA arms race. Instead of representing themselves authentically, they're stuck trying to trick a computer into picking them out of the stack. Career centers give advice like, put additional keywords in your margins with a white font. People won't see them, but the computer scanning your application will. Really? After all the hard work and sacrifice of earning an education, this is what we're reduced to? The other typical response is that each of us feels the need to apply to more and more jobs. In my day, 2015, the typical job seeker applied to 100 jobs. I just read an article telling people that because of the corona quarantine and the hiring freezes that it's caused, you should be applying to 500 jobs. Really? Just spam yourself out there randomly and hope something sticks? You deserve better. You deserve to be recognized as a human instead of just some numbers. You deserve to be treated as an individual, not just a replaceable commodity. Have you considered that if 10,000 people apply to a position, there's always somebody in line right behind you? The company can offer you any salary they want. If you don't take it, there are 9,999 people in line behind you. Gross. You are not a commodity. You are not gasoline. The thing we seem to be missing is the human touch. By the way, this is also the key to the transformation story I told you in episode one. I had all of the qualifications I needed to demonstrate my ability to get the job done. I applied to 100 jobs like they told me to, and I got zero phone calls for interviews. I'm not talking about job offers. I didn't even get the interview. I responded by deciding I was done talking to a computer. I wanted to talk to a person. This one decision is what took me from 100 applications and zero interviews to 25 applications and 26 interviews. 
You can hear the entire story in episode one at intentionalacademy.com slash one. Let's take an interlude to dig into two concepts called direct marketing and brand marketing. As a mechanical engineer, I feel uniquely qualified to tell you about these two topics. That's sarcasm. In all seriousness, my approach to most things in life is to find people smarter than me and read their books. So here's a quick summary of what the smart people are saying about this topic. Direct marketing is what you usually notice as advertising. Here's a product. These are the features. This is the problem it solved. And you can have one if you'll give us 1995. Direct marketing is how you sell a commodity. You take roughly the same product offered by different manufacturers, sort it by price, and then buy the one that meets your minimum set of requirements. It doesn't matter whether you stay in a Marriott or a Hilton or a Holiday Inn. If we blindfolded you and dropped you in a room, you likely wouldn't even know which brand you were sitting in. Commodities. Pulled up on a website, sorted by price, and selected from a list of other similar adequate options. Direct marketing is the typical approach to selling this stuff. Make you aware of the features and then ask you to buy now. That's kind of like applying to jobs on the internet. Your resume is the list of features. The application system is like Hotels.com or Travelocity. It takes a bunch of similar, adequate options and sorts them on a few simple criteria. The problem is, each of those options is a real life human being with individual hopes and dreams. People with a story. Next, it spits out the, quote, top results. Only it's a lot harder to define the effective criteria here. We know what we want out of a hotel. A bed, clean sheets, quiet, and one of those little waffle makers in the lobby. I hate to burst your bubble, but every college graduate with the same major is roughly the same. You've all taken the same core classes and a few electives. You all have a similar base of knowledge and similar qualifications. Colleges don't graduate specialists with bachelor's degrees. And that's okay. That's why you're applying to entry-level jobs. The problem is, this sameness means you're more or less randomly chosen for a job. At least you are if you're counting on your GPA and your resume to get things done. When you use the direct marketing approach to your career, you position yourself as replaceable by anyone else who can get the basic job done. You have no leverage, no impact. You are a list of minimum viable features on a resume. The worst part is that everyone becomes the goal. You have to impress everyone, please everyone, because you don't know which one of them is going to pick you. Brand marketing works differently. Brand marketing takes a stand and communicates a premium. Brand marketing usually doesn't ask you to buy something right now. They're asking you to feel a certain way about their organization. Did you notice how many ads at the Super Bowl did this? They just wanted to tell you about the social cause they were involved in. Do business with us, and you'll make an impact in a developing nation. Buy our brand of soda, and we'll send textbooks to an underfunded elementary school. Drink our coffee, and we'll give a remote community clean drinking water. The difference is that they aren't focused on the features anymore. They're focused on the relationship you have with their brand and what it feels like to do business with them. If you have any brands that you're loyal to, this is why. The features don't matter. It's the way they make you feel when you pick them. The Intentional Academy teaches people to do brand marketing with their careers. When you stop trying to win the direct marketing qualifications race, a race to the bottom, by the way, you get to find work that actually ignites your passion. A funny thing happens when people go to work with passion. They succeed at their jobs. Instead of generic, you're premium. You do something special not just fit the checklist of minimum features. It's not even about the features. It's about the mission. When your mission overlaps with the company's mission, magic happens. It's the affiliation that they're looking for, the chance to stand for something that matters. You're no longer trying to please everybody, which is good because you can't please everyone anyhow. Someone, someone is the goal. Serve the minimum viable market, the people who say, we can't live without you. I hope you enjoyed this little picture of what life looks like for people who choose brand marketing over direct marketing as a framework for their careers, because that's where the Intentional Academy intends to take you. How can you get started? What can you do to switch from the rat race of direct marketing and tap into the power of brand marketing instead? 
three things. One, communicate clearly. Two, tell a story. Three, build a brand. Let's unpack each one and then I'll wrap up the episode. First, communicate clearly. I'm a dedicated and hardworking individual focused on delivering quality results. Most people write a tagline like this as part of their job search. They use it on their LinkedIn profiles. They list it under their name at the top of their resume. They embed it in their cover letter. The problem is, I have no idea what it means, which means you're making a bad first impression on a hiring manager who has to sift through dozens of these things every day as a primary part of their job. Interpretation requires calories. Our brains resist burning calories as a defense tactic. We are not interested in figuring out the meaning of most of the things we hear. When you ask someone to figure out what you're talking about in your tagline, you're asking them to work too hard. I'm a dedicated and hardworking individual focused on delivering quality results. There are two big problems with this tagline. The first is that I don't believe people when they give themselves compliments. It's too easy to write down who we wish we were instead of who we actually are. I'd much rather show you that I'm hardworking and dedicated. My results are my certification, not some generic tagline. The second problem with this tagline, it's so generic, I can't tell you if this person delivers pizza, performs plastic surgery, writes advertising copy, or designs jet engines. I'm a dedicated and hardworking individual focused on delivering quality results. By doing what? For who? Instead, write a tagline that commits you to something. Remember the difference between direct and brand marketing? You're going to have to commit, take a stand, and actually say something. Try this instead. Innovation through aerospace projects that inspire change. Engineer, advocate, artist. Looking to balance the scales of diversity and inclusion by supporting STEM initiatives for young girls and minorities. That's the tagline one of our current students wrote. She's in our career development course right now called Bypass the Machine, and she just launched her website with this tagline so that potential employers have something to look at when they search her name on Google, which they will. This student is controlling the narrative instead of hoping that potential employers don't find some embarrassing social media post from sophomore year. Innovation through aerospace projects that inspire change. Engineer, advocate, artist looking to balance the scales of diversity and inclusion by supporting STEM initiatives for young girls and minorities. Create a clear tagline that commits you to a niche. It doesn't have to be hyper-focused, but I should at least be able to name the industry and the role you play in it. Her tagline clearly tells me that she's an engineer in the aerospace industry. By the way, you can find out what she's up to at MelanieBreeze.com. That's breeze, just like the wind blowing, MelanieBreeze.com. We'll link to it in the show notes. She has done a great job of showing what you can do with brand marketing approach to career development. She's learned it in our course called Bypass the Machine. Communicate clearly. Your future depends on it. Second thing, tell a story. The second thing you can do is tell a story. The entire point of this conversation is that you'll get much more traction in your job search by being a human instead of a list of qualifications on a resume. We live in an age where features don't sell, stories do. The competition for people's attention has changed a lot in the last few decades because we finally learned something that we've known subconsciously for millennia. People remember stories. Here's an experiment to prove it. Just minutes ago, I told you two reasons that name brand companies get so many applications to their job postings. Without going back, list them right now. My guess is that you're having trouble remembering that I said name brand companies get thousands of applications because we tend to equate brand recognition with prestige and because it is easy for anyone, anywhere to apply. Let me ask you another question. Was it cold or hot the night my friends and I had a hole digging contest? How deep was our hole by the end? You are probably having an easier time remembering that it was so cold the ground froze, and I could stand in the hole with my hands over my head and not reach the top. People remember stories. Go tell yours instead of trying to paint the image of some imaginary ideal candidate. You probably have no clue what the employer is actually looking for, but when you tell your genuine story, 
They're forced to decide if you fit or not based on real information. And trust me when I say that I have experience working in places I don't fit. I'd rather have my options limited to places I actually belong. In our free guide, The Ultimate Career Builder Starter Kit, we take a look at a telephone ad from the 1990s and compare it to a recent iPhone ad. The 90s phone takes a full page to list its features. The iPhone ad is a picture of a person staring into the distance with a city skyline behind them. There isn't even a picture of the phone, let alone a list of the features. Tell us what our lives will look like if we invite you into them. That's how you sell yourself as a candidate. You can download that guide at intentionalacademy.com slash career builder, or just click the link in the show notes at intentionalacademy.com slash three, as in the number of this, our third episode. The third thing that you can do right now to start grabbing employer's attention instead of waiting for a computer to randomly pick your name out of some pile is to start building your brand. Today, we talked about the difference between direct and brand marketing. When you're engaged in the antiquated direct marketing approach to landing jobs, you are 100% focused on qualifications. Chasing more extracurriculars to add to your resume, hunting for better keywords to put as much information as you possibly can on a one-page resume. When you focus on brand marketing, you get to showcase your unique personality and devote your time to building an asset that lasts. You get to spend your time connecting with professionals who will one day be your colleague or maybe even your boss. This doesn't happen by pestering them with bullet points on your resume. It happens when you reach out and form a connection and give them somewhere to follow you home to. Your brand is the sum total of what people can find about you on the internet combined with what people say about you when you're not in the room. These things are in your control. If you take intentional action, get to work. Well, that does it. Here's a quick recap of what we just talked about. We started by looking at the problems with online job applications. In short, they create a buyer's market that only benefits the companies while turning you into a replaceable commodity. The message is, if you don't like what we have to offer, there is someone else in line behind you. This stance can make it feel like we're always in a high unemployment market where there are more people seeking work than there are open jobs. If you're tired of pursuing the keywords and GPA race to the bottom, tired of spamming out dozens or even hundreds of applications and getting no result, then it is time to put the human touch back in your job search. Next, we showed you how to approach that by comparing direct versus brand marketing. When you engage in brand marketing, you paint a genuine picture of yourself for potential employers to consider instead of trying to offer them some best attempt at fitting a non-existent image of professionalism. Lastly, we gave you three actions that you can take right now to get moving. First, you can work on clarifying your communications. Texts such as your tagline are far more important than you realize, and they should stake a claim to something substantial. Second, you can focus on telling your story. Instead of just building a spec sheet filled with product features, your keyword optimized resume, why don't you spend a little effort giving them something they can remember? Third, you can build your brand. Give potential employers a chance to see what it would really be like to work with you. In a world where almost all entry-level job applicants are qualified, people start asking themselves who they'd like to see on a Monday morning. Do they want to work with you? They can't tell unless you give them a chance to get to know you. This mindset is important in the best of times, but we're not in the best of times. The coronavirus pandemic has wreaked havoc on our economy and stressed us to our limits. If you hear nothing else from this entire episode, hear this. There is hope. The entire professional community is staring at their devices, looking for connection. Don't let this pass you by. The circumstances aren't favorable right now, but the truth is they never are. You can be a victim of this situation, or you can take charge. We can help you get started for free by sending you a copy of the Ultimate Career Builder Starter Kit. It will help you make three key decisions to define your personal brand and consider how to use what we've just talked about to land a job. 
head over to intentionalacademy.com slash three, as in the number three, to access this resource. We have a link right there waiting for you at intentionalacademy.com slash three. We will show you how to present yourself to potential employers with the free guide at intentionalacademy.com slash three. intentionalacademy.com slash three. And we'll be back next week with a truly special episode. We'll be diving into the topic of personal finance, giving you the insights that led to me paying off $95,000 of debt in just 32 months. We are tired of the broke college stereotype that leaves you feeling like it's normal to be stressed about money. Broke and stressed are different things. Let's get you feeling confident about your money and set you up for future prosperity. But I have a special announcement to go along with it. Have you noticed that I use the words we and us a lot when describing the Intentional Academy? That's not because I secretly believe myself to be Gollum. We likes it, my precious. It's because there are more than one of us working here. Next week, we'll be introducing my collaborator and co-host, Justin Thomas. We'll share how he got involved with the Intentional Academy through his own debt-free journey, a journey that started when he saw what I was doing and called it crazy until he realized the freedom that comes from being in control of your finances. I can't wait to share this with you and to start having him on the show regularly. Don't miss next week's episode if you need some hope in this stressful time. We're going to give you some practical wisdom on what you can be doing with your money and your behavior to make it work right now. I can't wait to see you there. Make it easy on yourself and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. That's it. Thanks for being here. You need to know. We are the definition of a small business, more like a tiny business. We've had a handful of paying customers, and we are thrilled to be seeing some of the amazing results in their lives as they put the humanity back in their career development plans. People deserve to love their work. I want to invite you to join the movement. When you share this episode with a friend, you might be the only person on the planet who did. Maybe next week it'll be two of you, and the week after that, it'll be three. The point is, you can change lives by doing a few simple tasks. One, subscribe to this podcast. Two, share an episode with someone you care about. Three, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. At this stage of our growth, you might be the only person who does these things this week, and I can't wait to tell you how grateful I am for it. Thanks in advance for your support, my friend. We'll see you next week.